Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'd like to talk about the fuel level sending unit in your BMW E33 series. Uh, the fuel level sending unit basically just a sensor in your fuel tank that measure how much fuel is left in the tank and tell the fuel gauge how much to display. It. So, before I started, I'd like to talk about the fuel tank itself. Uh, in E30, there are two types of fuel tanks. Uh, from September 1983 to September 1987, uh, E30 is equipped with a 53 liter tank. From September 1987 and onward, it has uh, 63 liter tanks. So, if you have a 53 liter tank, you have only one like this one fuel level sending unit is basically is integrated into the fuel pump assembly if you have ever put up your fuel pump assembly you know you have to remove this fuel level sending unit first and if you have a 63 liter tank you know that you have a second fuel uh, sending level unit and uh, this is actually located on the other, the other side of the tank so another way to see if you have a 50, 53 or 63 liter tank is you can just put off your rear seat button and uh, you will see two uh, covers if you remove both covers and you see both fuel level sending unit, one on each side, then you know you have a 63 liter tank. If you can only remove one cover and the other one's kind of riveted on there, you cannot remove it, you probably has a 53 liter tank. Alright, let's move on to the fuel level sending unit itself. So it's basically it's a variable resistor plus a switch it's a very simple device and on top of that you can see there are three terminals they are correspond to terminal 31, terminal G and terminal W terminal, terminal 31 is uh, just cut directly connected to the ground and uh, it also connect to the casing of the fuel level sending unit itself and the uh, terminal G is connected to the fuel gauge inside the instrument cluster and terminal W as goes to the uh, low fuel warning light and uh, you have ever wondering where is it located it actually it's underneath the fuel gauge so there's an orange window over here. There's a light bulb which turns on you if you have a low fuel. That's a low fuel uh, warning light. So inside a fuel level sending unit, uh, terminal 31 actually connect to the a thin piece of metal wire over here is that wire I hope you can see that and the wire goes around it back to terminal G that's the other side of the wire and between these wires there's a float and the float basically is fluctuated along with the fuel level and the float actually make contacts of two wires with uh, uh, two metal fingers pinching the wires. As you can see, there's two metal fingers basically clamping and pinching the wires, making the contact on both sides. Okay. As the flow goes up and down, uh, it changes the resistance between terminal 31 and terminal G. Uh, there's an equivalent uh, 
electrical diagram basically show you there's a two parallel resistor and a one change according to the fuel level. So let me turn on my multimeter to show you that how does it work. So I connect my two probe one is to terminal 31 and terminal uh, one to terminal G. As you can see, when the flow goes up, the resistance is going down. And when it's at the maximum, it has supposed to have like a 5 ohm. As the flow goes down, the resistance increase all the way down. It should have about 60 ohm. So. That's the first function of this fuel level sending unit. And uh, the second function is a fuel warning light switch. So at the bottom of the this unit there are two pins actually. One pin is connected to the center shaft, then connected to the W terminal. The other pin actually connected to the, the button screws and the button screw connect the, uh, the connector to the, the casing and to the ground. Alright, and let me show you the exact two pins on the unit. This is a, the pin goes to the, the W terminal. This is the pin goes to the ground. When the flow drops all the way to the bottom, and it, sh it basically shorted out those two pins. So there's the contact uh, metal. See there, you can see the two indentation. Hopefully, you can see two indentation, basically shorting those two pins. That basically short the terminal W to the ground, as sure uh, that would turn on the low fuel warning light bulb. Okay, uh, see if we can demonstrate the, the stuff in action. Okay, let me connect one to the terminal W and the other one hit a button screw. So when there's the flow didn't reach the bottom, there's supposed to have no continuity between those two contacts and when it dropped to the bottom. You should have a, a very low resistance between them. Let's see if it's actually making a good connection here. Yep. So you can see that only two ohm. Lift it up no continuity, drop it, and shake it a little bit, yeah, Let's see what's going on here, yeah, yeah, very low resistance there, okay, it doesn't have to be super low to turn on the light bulb, anything below 100 will work, will turn that light bulb on with no problem at all. All right. Uh, that's the fuel level sending unit. Uh, on the other style of fuel level sending unit, basically is the same operation. Let me show you the inside. It's the same float with two wires, and the resistance also vary from zero at a, about five at the top and sixty at the bottom. Uh, except is I only have two con uh, two terminals here, and there's no switch building into this uh, sending unit. So, in a 63 liter tank, those two 
uh, sending you basically put it in a series so you have to have both unit working properly to have a correct uh, fuel level display on your gauge so any one of them is uh, at a fault they will not give you the accurate uh, fuel level so as you can see that this is a, a device which has a lots of bare metal to metal contact so it's highly susceptible to any like corrosion, oxidation or contamination this is usually how it felt uh, when you have a uh, uh, set, uh, fuel level sending unit sitting in a tank uh, with a bad fuel or uh, moisture intrusion usually you will see a lot of corrosion inside the unit like this one and this corrosion will gen uh, will greatly de deteriorate any uh, contacts between those uh, connectors and that will ruin your f fuel level so this is usually what happened when it fails so can you repair it? yes you can but you have to remove the casing uh, for this one it's very easy to remove the casing you can just remove the bottom nuts and you can put this whole casing out very easily then you can try to clean all these contacts uh, uh, the wires and everything and also make sure those connection of the terminal is is solid and but for this one as you can see this is a casing is pinched on it's much more harder to remove you have to really wiggle it uh, gently and pry around it then you can remove the casing uh, if you're lucky you can <laughs> you will probably won't break anything when you remove the casing like I did here the same uh, you just clean all the contact points and make sure the connection is good uh, I've seen a couple of them that have a really really bad corrosion they eat, pretty much eat up all the uh, terminals and uh, you have to pretty much rebuild all this connection alright I hope you find this thing helpful and this video helpful and uh, leave your, if you have any questions leave your comments below I have more video coming up uh, about this E30 clusters diagnosis alright thank you for watching I'll see you on the next one